This tutorial will build on the last one, showing you how to make your code more readable and create user-defined symbols to display in your cheat table. When we look on our script, we see the same address is used in three places. We can replace that with a descriptive name using the defined statement. Anything above the enabled section will be assembled both when enabling and disabling the script. While we're at it, let's do the same for the array of bytes representing the code we're replacing and the offset of the current magic. Let's add the other offsets we know as well. Right now, the cheat just freezes the value. You see the bar it actually goes back down slowly to our new value. Let's change it to have two options. This code is executed whenever your magic changes, either by using a power, drinking a potion, or when it's naturally refilling. Our first option will be to simply fill up the mana bar. Our second option would be to instantly fill it, but only if it's already increasing. That lets you still run out of magic, but not have to use potions to increase your value anymore. First, let's create two options, two labels to reference the values in our code. Call them flag, magic fill, and flag, magic instant charge. We want to use these outside of our script, so we'll register them as symbols. While we're at it, let's create a third variable to store the base address so we can use it in our table and look at it later to further investigate the structure. Now since we register these symbols, we should probably unregister them in the disable section. Otherwise they'll be pointing to who knows what in memory. Okay, now we add, need to actually create some space for the variables. So let's put them at the start of our new memory. I like doing that because it's guaranteed to be an offset of 4, which helps with performance. It's not a big deal, but it's just nice and clean. So the assembler is starting changing its current address to our newly allocated memory. Let's tell it to assign the value of that to flag magic fill and allocate space for a double word as four bytes. Start it with zero value. Do the same for our other values. Now new mem is no longer pointing to the start of our code. So let's create a new label. And tell it this is where the code actually starts. Then our injected code will jump to that. base address is an ESI, so the first thing we want to do is store that in our variable. If either flag is enabled or not, we will still want to execute the instructions to change the value, so let's uncomment the original code and change the value of EAX based on our flags. First, let's see if we have the magic fill checked. Create a label to skip it.
and jump if it's not equal to one. Now this code will only be executed if that flag's value is one. And let's just load EAX from the max magic. And jump down to our original code. I'll use very similar code down here for the instant charge. Check that flag instead. And we also want to skip setting it to the max unless it's increasing. So let's do a compare with the AX and the current value. And jump if it's not above, which means just AX is not increasing to the original code. So if AX is increasing, it will load the max value and set that. Right now the cheat would just execute the original code because both of our flags are the default of zero. So let's add our variables to the cheat table. And set this one as hex. Now the question marks because this script hasn't been executed yet with the changes. Let's disable it and re-enable it and we see our values. But we have to actually execute the code to see that. Let's do that now. Okay. Let's change the magic instant charge, enable that by setting it to one. charging it's instantly fills up so we can still run out of it okay let's try enabling the magic fill option let's just lower our energy some enabled it, when we use our magic, it should go right to the top. And it does. Okay, let's write scripts so we can toggle our flags with hotkeys. Just copy and paste this one. Call it magic fill. And here, since we define these symbols in our other script, we can use them here. We'll just have the enable section set it to one. We'll start assembling whatever value at whatever address flag magic fill is. And the disable will just set to zero. Set the hotkey for that. Create a new one, F1, and toggle script to the default. Okay, let's copy that. Change it to F2 instant charge. And change the hotkey to F2. it needs to use the different address. Okay, now let's nest these under the script that are required 
if this script isn't enabled, those symbols won't be there and the scripts won't execute. And let's change this to hide the children when deactivated. So now if we deactivate this, we don't have to see those flags. And you can see the memory that they used to point to has been deallocated. So it's filled with garbage. Let's go back to our game. Check out the instant charge. Disable it with F2. Check out magic field with F1. Everything works perfect. Okay, finally for this tutorial, let's change it to use AOB scan so that if the code changes, our cheat will probably still keep working. Disable it to put the original memory back. And this is where we want to inject. So let's start looking for these bytes. Do a scan for array of byte. We need to uncheck writable. So we'll scan the code areas, which are read only. And separate out those bytes. You can use star or double question marks to indicate you don't care what the byte is. So let's add a few to the end, because this might be in more than one place. Yeah, we can see the code is in three different places, but the next byte is different for all three. The next byte of 3B is the one we want. Change that to 3B. And we only get one value. Copy that array of bytes. Now in our enable section, we'll no longer be using this address. We'll still be looking for the same bytes, but plus an extra one. Let's do an, put that extra byte there. And now we'll do an AOB scan. This will AOB scan is like a defined statement. It doesn't actually create a label. You can't register as a symbol. Let's just call the defined name AOB and scan for bytes. We don't need the assert anymore because the script will fail if the AOB scan doesn't find anything. So now we have an AOB which is defined the same as this. Down our injected code, then we want to start at AOB. However, in the disable section, we no longer have AOB available, that's only in the enable. We can move it out of the enable, but we replace these bytes. We would have to use more bytes following and replace these with stars. Instead of doing that, let's create a label and register a symbol that can be used in the disable section. Call it inject magic. And unregister it also. Now the disable section will go there and compile that or assemble it. Oh, I actually need to use it here for its address to be set. So AOB is already defined. It tells the assembler to move to that address. It tells it to assign that current address value to the inject magic label and to register that address as a symbol that can be used anywhere in Cheat Engine. So now when we do this, we also go to the memory viewer and go to address inject magic because it's a user defined symbol and we can see that it's also shown there there's one thing to note since I re-enabled the script this is still checked however the value is zero because I reassembled the enable portion of this script 
You can see that if we resume. The cheat's not working. Disable, re-enable, and... 